Hey guys, my name is Nikunj and welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to do a different sort of a video. Normally I do unboxings and reviews of uh, various products, but uh, today I am going to do something a little different for you guys. So I have been one of the early adopters of network attached storage, so to speak, or NAS drives. And um, I have been using the WD MyCloud for almost nine, eight years or so now. So I initially got this in 2012, if I'm not wrong. Um, for the early part of the decade, it worked really nice for me. I did not face any issues, but for the past couple of years, I'd been facing issues with it where it would be powered on, but uh, it would not be detected over the network. I had to, you know, reboot it for it to work. And then about a month ago, it decided to die. So normally the LED light that we have in the front stays solid blue when it is powered on and it's working. But uh, in my case, the LED was completely red. It, would, uh, it was a solid red. So I contacted WD uh, since the drive was very old. The warranty was obviously out and uh, they basically could not do anything in this regard because they don't really you know, uh, provide any services for data recovery or any sort of thing as well. So I checked on the internet to see what all can be done with this particular drive, whether I could somehow salvage the data. I did not find a lot of information. I did find some videos on how to dismantle it. Uh, some videos talking about something which is completely different. I decided to let it be and uh, just work off the you know USB hard drives that I have and I've been using. But uh, then I realized that there was some data that was only on this which I did not have a backup of on any of my drives. And that got me again researching on how I can salvage the data from this drive because it was not getting detected anyways. So it took me what, six, seven hours uh, over the weekend to, you know, research on how this can be done. I watched maybe a dozen or so videos, but um, I did not find any video where everything was there in one place. So I decided to make this for you guys so that you have all the information in one place and you can probably benefit out of it if you have this piece of junk, which it is now. And if you want to salvage your data from it, or maybe you want to do anything else with it. So keep watching. First, let's go ahead, dismantle this drive. I've already done that. I put this back together just uh, to show this to you guys again on video. So let's get into that. And then I'll take you through the process of how you can recover your data what software I use and everything else in between. So keep watching. Okay, so here we go. This is the drive. Uh, this is the LED light that I was talking about. It normally should stay solid blue if it's working properly. In my case, what was happening was that it was a solid white for a very long time. It used to flash white for a while and then go completely solid red. So from what I read on the internet, uh, this can be because of um, two major reasons. One, the firmware on the NAS itself has completely bricked or the drive itself is not working properly and the data on the drive is, you know, basically corrupt. So uh, we'll go ahead and basically speak about both the possible cases. First, let's go ahead, dismantle this and see how we can recover or, you know, basically extract the uh, three terabyte hard drive that we have in this by the way. So Yeah, let's go ahead and check that before we do um, I'll quickly show you the back of this as well. We have a USB 3.0 port over here We have the LAN port and obviously the power cord is plugged in right at the bottom uh, This is basically a shell sort of a design like a taco shell the white uh, Portion the plastic white portion that we have here basically sits like a taco shell and uh, the rest of the enclosure is just placed inside. Uh, let me go ahead, grab a credit card because that is what we would need to open this up. You can use um, one of the guitar picks if you have a sturdy one. You can use a spudger as well, but yeah, the head of that spudger would need to be really, really flat and you know, really thin. So let me grab a card. All right, here we go. We have the card with us. Just place it like this. And again, I have already opened this, so this is just for demonstration. 
what you would need to do is you would need to place your card between this white portion and the metal sort of looking portion right here in the slit and basically wedge it a bit because there are certain clips inside so you, you would need to make sure that you are basically getting those clips apart a little bit once you've done that and your card is fairly fairly inside just with both your thumbs place your fingers on either side on the metal portion not on the white because that would be counterproductive just push it up a little bit and then slide it outward what it would do it would remove it from the clips and it would slide it out just a little bit you would need to repeat this process on the other side to get all the clips out so i'll quickly do that here all right we have the card in push it up push it out and it should start sliding out once it is done just hold this from the back hold the shell just move it out so what i did in my case was i completely broke the pins off because i did that a little too hard probably but um, i'm not going to use this drive anyway if in case you want to salvage it maybe change the drive that's there inside then yeah please be very careful with that so as you guys can see this has a three terabyte wd red drive which is again a nas drive and the major difference between a NAS drive and any, any normal hard drive that you use is the fact that a NAS drive is rated for 24 hours of continuous use. Uh, you can, you know, basically keep on running it and it would not be a problem. With normal hard drives, it is recommended to go ahead and at least reset, uh, you know, uh, reboot them, shut them down for a while, stop using them for a while because with a NAS, the companies make sure that you know they are rated for prolonged use because there are times where your nas would not power off for maybe weeks or months at a time right with a normal hard drive don't do that it would you know cause all sorts of problems okay so to get this out we have two little pins over here in which the hard drive rests all you need to do is push it from this side and it should basically swing out just a little bit for you to you know pull it out just like this you would hear a you know click sort of a sound when you do that don't be afraid of that it's not going to break anything because that's how it is designed now keeping this aside what we have here is basically the motherboard of this drive and then an enclosure around it and as you guys can see the interface at the back is right here the motherboard is basically what has the firmware for the drive on it it is what keeps you know the data cycling and everything so let's go ahead and remove this to remove the motherboard from this basically all you need is a phillips head screw or a screwdriver actually sorry just finding the right screw and yep i got it so again uh, please be very careful with this uh, in case you want to reassemble the drive and use it again in future make sure you know where everything goes Just three screws. We have the screws out. Now just pull this towards yourself and this should bring it out. As you guys can see, this is the interface where the drive connects to this to the SATA interface of your NAS drive. This is the little processor we have here and the other resistors and you know the capacitors for this. But again, uh, right now this is not useful. Let's keep that aside. We have three posts in this, uh, three metal posts on which this rests. Again, keep these very safe in case you want to use this drive again in future. 
Now coming to these little feet or whatever you want to call them, uh, there are four of them around the drive. Okay, so if in case you just want to salvage your data, you don't really need to remove these, just connect this to you know the, your computer and just transfer the data over. If in case you want to salvage the drive, use the drive in maybe an external drive enclosure, or you want to put this as an extra drive in your computer, the SATA base that you have in your computer, then yeah, you would need to remove these feet and the entire enclosure as well. So this is a different uh, sort of a screw. It's a pentalope screw, I believe, uh, if I'm not wrong. So let me go ahead and pick that head up. I think this should do it. No, not that one. I think I got it now. Yep, got it. One's done. There goes the second one. And there goes the third. Okay, now we have a metal bracket over here as well. Let's go ahead and remove that as well. I guess the last one is right here. Oh, dear God, this is tight. Which machine was having a bad day when it screwed this in? Nope. Okay, that's not coming up. Okay, I'll try and remove this maybe a little later. Let me go ahead and show you guys how I can, uh, or how you can connect this to your computer and get the data off it. Okay, before we start, let me quickly show you. Uh, this is the drive that I'll be using to back up all the data that I have on the NAS or the WD red drive that I took out of the NAS basically. This is again a product from WD, the WD My Passport. This is a five terabyte drive. Let's go ahead and open it because we would need this right away. There we go compact little thing a little thick though because this has again a five terabyte drive inside some paperwork and the usb cable to connect the drive all right let's go ahead and now connect the nas or the wd red drive that we took out of the nas again to my computer I'll show you how I do that as well really quickly. Okay, so now that we have the computer open, I already opened that first. So I'll go ahead and connect the drive to the SATA cables from my computer. I've already gone ahead and taken those out. Uh, these are keyed, so they are only going to go in one way. You need to connect these to the SATA ports that you have on the drive right here. So cable number one goes in and cable number two again it's keyed would go in only one way goes in something like this so make sure that your computer is powered off when you do this because a lot of times um, if you do this when your computer is running either the computer is not going to pick up the drive or you may cause some issues because most drive are not hot swappable you cannot just do that on the fly as you go so please keep that in mind and now we are going to power the computer on and i've also plugged in the new usb drive i've got so it's plugged into the usb 3.0 port that i have at the front now let me show you the software that i'm going to use all right so 
while my computer is powering on, um, I thought I will tell you guys a little bit about the drive and what we're going to do. So first and foremost, the drive itself is in an EXT4 format, which is a Linux based format. Right. If you connect it directly to your Windows computer, your computer is not going to be able to read the data of it because that is not a format that Windows natively um, you know, supports or recognizes. In your disk management, the drive may show up as a raw partition. And again, it's not able to read any data of it. It might show up uh, in my computer with your C drive and your D drive and any other drive that you might have on the computer. but when you try and open it, it would give you an error saying that this particular drive is not recognized. You need to format it before you can go ahead and use it. OK, so for that, uh, there are a couple of ways. The one that worked for me was using a third party tool which can read the EXT for format in Windows. All right. So there were a couple that I came across. Uh, Linux Reader was one of them and uh, there was one more which was a mini tool partition sort of a thing so those did not really work uh, linux reader completely you know uh, gave up on trying to read the hard drive itself the mini partition tool did read the drive but it took the drive into recovery mode and all the files that it was recovering for me had recovered in front of them not the original file names and since I have 2.7 terabytes of data in this, trying to decipher between those two files, or um, you know, actually all of the files with recovered in front of the name and you know, then a big long string would have been an absolute nightmare. The one that worked for me was a software from the company Paragon Software, which is Linux file system for Windows. Okay, so when you open the software, it would show you your volume if it is in an ext4 format it may be unmounted so you have to click on the mount button and uh, make sure you're mounting it in read only mode because again it's an ext format so uh, you know your computer would not be able to write to it and this particular software is available for a 10 day free trial uh, mine shows 7 days i've already used this uh, this for you know 3 days already but uh, this is basically a paid software. It is available for a 10 day free trial if in case you want to use them. So as you guys can see, my drive is now showing up in ext4 format. And if we go ahead into the drive, it shows all my data, the way the folder structure was originally there. It's all there. So that's wonderful. Let's go ahead and copy this. This is the my passport drive that I just connected, the one that I just unboxed for you. We'll create a folder for all the data that's there in it. Open it and paste. So in my case, again, um, it's 2.7 terabytes of data that I have in here. So it's going to take a while for it to copy all the data over. But uh, in your case, if you want specific files off of it you can go ahead select only those specific files and move them over without moving anything else so there you go guys i hope you found this video useful if in case you have any suggestions or anything that uh, you know you did which i did not or maybe this did not work for you let me know in the comments below uh, if you found this video useful if you want to see more content like it hit the like button Share it with uh, any of your friends who might be facing an issue with the MyCloud Drive or any of the NAS offerings that WD has. This method should work. And subscribe to the channel. Until next time, take care and stay safe.